Another familiar name within the Ukrainian community with us today served as Chief of Staff for then First Lady Hillary Clinton and most recently as U.S. Ambassador for Global Women's Issues. To provide remarks on behalf of Secretary Clinton, please warmly welcome Ambassador Milan Verveer. Your Excellencies, Pani Poroshenko, dear friends all, while I regret that I am unable to be with you in Washington, I am sending my warmest greetings to everyone gathered, and I want to thank all of those who work so hard to make this day possible. The monument you unveil today will stand as an enduring memorial to the millions of brave Ukrainians who perished during the winter and spring of 1932 and 33 as Stalin's regime ruthlessly stole the wheat and crops of hardworking farmers. In those terrible months, millions starved to death, villages were destroyed, and families disappeared. As you know, the Holodomor means death by hunger. It's a hauntingly simple name to describe such a barbaric act of hate and oppression. Many in Ukraine and here in the United States have long waited for today. And I am so heartened to know that for years to come, visitors to our nation's capital will stop here, stare into the disappearing wheat, and learn about the lives that were lost in the Holodomor. This monument honors the memory of those lives and stands as a testament to the bonds of friendship between the United States and Ukraine. It is also a tribute to the strength and resilience of Ukrainians who are today once again fighting for their nation's future and who believe so strongly in the promise of democracy and peace. The United States has a duty to stand with them to help the Ukrainian government defend its sovereignty and maintain their democratic institutions, and to ensure that all Ukrainians face a brighter and a more promising future with limitless opportunities. I look forward to visiting this memorial in person, and in the meantime, please know you have my best wishes for a mem memorable event with warm regards and Slava Ukraini. I am sincerely yours, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Thank you, Moan, for those remarks from Secretary Clinton. Please express our gratitude to the Secretary for her continuous support of the cause of freedom and for self-determination of Ukraine. Thank you once again. Our dedication ceremony is also augmented by another friend of Ukraine. It is a pleasure to introduce Robert Karam, foreign policy advisor to Governor Jeb Bush, who will deliver remarks on his behalf. Robert. Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, Madam First Lady, um, it's an honor to be here with you today, uh, representing Governor Bush, uh, who sends his regrets that he could not be here with us uh, to mark this solemn occasion. Uh, and he's asked me to read a letter uh, on his behalf. On this solemn occasion of the dedication of the Ukrainian Holomodor Memorial, we honor the memory of the millions of Ukrainians who perished in a famine caused by Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin. This was a horrific period in Ukrainian and European history. 
this memorial will remind future generations not only of the tremendous suffering by Ukraine, but also of the moral depravity and unconstrained brutality of the evil empire of the Soviet Union and the links to which Soviet rulers would go to subjugate its captive nations. These victims of the struggle against Soviet totalitarianism will forever live in our memory. This reminder of Soviet aggression is an especially poignant counterpoint to the revisionist propaganda of Russian President Vladimir Putin, who unabashedly proclaims his nostalgia for a whitewashed version of the Soviet Union. Unfortunately, it is not only history that Putin seeks to revise, but the very borders of Ukraine and Europe. It is past time for the free nations of the world to resist his illegal invasion and annexation of Crimea, his continued aggression in eastern Ukraine, and his efforts to expand Russia's hegemonic influence elsewhere. Today, Moscow's aggression threatens not only Ukraine, but Europe, the United States, and the very international order and peace that our parents and grandparents gave so much to build. Allowing Putin to act with impunity will only embolden him and other despots who seek to subjugate their citizens and neighbors. May this memorial, steps from the United States Capitol, remind all who pass it of the terrible dangers of failing to stand up to those who threaten peace and freedom before it is too late. Sincerely, Jeb Bush. Robert, we appreciate your remarks on behalf of Governor Bush. Please express our gratitude as well for being with us on this very important day. Earlier in the program, we were privileged to hear from Holodomor survivor Alexander Severin. Seeing as this genocide devastated the Ukrainian nation for over 80 years, or 80 years ago, not many survivors remain to expose the truth about Stalin's crime against humanity and the Ukrainian nation. We are fortunate, however, to have another Holodomor survivor who wishes to express her remarks on this auspicious occasion. It is with great honor that I represent Holodomor survivor, Mrs. Olha Matula. of Ukraine, Shanovna Ukrainsko Gromado. I am a child survivor of the Great Famine Holodomor. In 1933, during the famine, I was only five years old, but I vividly remember some episodes from that period. My parents contributed a lot to my knowledge of the famine by interpreting events which we experienced. Millions of innocent people and children were murdered by starvation, more than one-fourth of the population of Ukraine. Some villages were dying completely because all food was taken from farmers by the order from Moscow. Those were, were our relatives, grandparents, uncles, and cousins. There were no first grade classes in 1940-1941 school year in Ukraine because no babies were born during the famine in 1933. Moscow denied the existence of the famine in Ukraine and mere mentioning that word would put one in jail or exiled. For decades, people were silent. The famine in the cities was not as brutal as it was in the villages where all food was confiscated from the peasants. Our family lived in Kyiv, and my mother, Varvara Dibert, testified for the Commission on the Ukraine Famine, which was created by the United States Congress in 1985. 
Executive Director, Dr. James. I'll share some of my mother's testimony. In 1932-33, thousands of peasants from surrounding villages who were stripped of all food they had by Moscow flocked to Kyiv. People were looking for salvation but found death on the streets. Nobody was allowed to help peasants in any way in Kyiv. Every morning as my mother went to work, she saw some of them sitting or leaning against the buildings. Many of them were already dead, the others were dying. Most frightening were the darkened faces of mothers with small children in their arms. The children with faces wrinkled like baked apples who could no longer cry. They just squealed and moved their mouths searching for food where there was none. Trucks removed dead bodies and dying from the streets. There was a collector of homeless children next door to our house complex. Dirty and enraged children were brought from the streets of Kiev by police. In a large building, former movie hall, the doors were always guarded. Sometimes through the open double door, my mother saw the children laying on the long wooden bunk beds, just staring at the ceiling. I remember that too. Several mornings while rushing to work, she has witnessed the police dragging the half-naked dead bodies of the children from the building and dumping them in the truck, just like piles of wood and covered them with dirty rags. Civil workers in Kyiv received food stamps, 40 grams of bread daily and 200 grams for each dependent. Bread was the main staple on our diet. I remember we were always hungry. At work, my father was given a bowl of soup every day. He fished out pieces of potatoes and sometimes bits of meat from it and brought it home for us children. In 1933, when commercial bread stores opened in Kiev, some peasants attempted to stand in bread lines. The militia brutally removed peasants from those lines and forced them into trucks that took them out of the city. In bigger cities, there were special stores, Turksins, where one could buy all sorts of goods in exchange for gold. But most of the people had no gold left. All of the crosses and wedding rings were sold for food. One day, my father brought some rice and millet from Turksin. When my mother asked him how did he get it, because we had no gold, he simply opened his mouth. The crowns from his teeth were gone. I volunteered to work with the Commission on Famine with Dr. Mace, transcribing more than a hundred of the interviews of witnesses from the tapes. They were survivors who came to the United States after World War II as refugees. Some of them your parents or grandparents. The horrors of those stories from people who survived the famine are forever in my memory. According to historians, during the early months of the fateful 1933 in Ukraine, at least 25,000 people died every day from hunger. Five million in the end of 1933 alone. To 10 million deaths during the rest of the 1930s attributable to the famine. It was a crime against humanity. Memory eternal to all who died in that genocide created by Moscow. Let this memorial serve as a reminder to all people that Russian aggression toward other nations should be stopped. God bless America and save Ukraine.
Боже, збережи Україну. Дякую. Mrs. Matula, we are grateful and blessed to have you with us during this dedication ceremony. Thank you for those inspirational, emotional, and deeply touching remarks. I would like to acknowledge with us this afternoon, seated in the front row, are several other Holodomor survivors who have traveled hundreds of miles to be with us. Please welcome them warmly with your applause. Please focus your attention on the monitor as we present a video greeting from another friend of Ukraine who unfortunately could not be with us this afternoon. It is the co-chair of the Senate Ukraine Caucus, Senator Robert Sever Rob Portman from Ohio. Hi, I'm U.S. Senator Rob Portman. I'm very sorry I can't be with you today, but I wanted to take a few moments and thank everyone at the Embassy of Ukraine, members of the U.S. Holodomor Committee, the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America, and everyone else who has played a part in unveiling of this memorial to commemorate the millions of innocent people who were victims of the famine genocide in Ukraine in the last century. This memorial will now stand as an eternal tribute to the men, women, and children who were killed through starvation as part of then the Soviet Union's ruthless campaign to stamp out any trace of Ukrainian national identity and political and cultural independence. It will also help educate people who may not know about one of the most horrifying tragedies of the last century, in the 20th century, and encourage them to learn more. Finally, it reminds us that evil is real and it will only be defeated if we stand up and fight it together to ensure that these horrors of the past remain in the history books. Today, the people of Ukraine face a very different but a familiar foe. An aggressive Russia has violated sovereign territory and ignited a conflict that has now left thousands dead and ceasefires broken. However, after visiting Ukraine twice in the past uh, year and a half, I have seen that the spirit of the Maidan is alive and well. I saw it when I led a congressional delegation to Kyiv to monitor the Ukrainian presidential elections back in May of 2014. There I saw the still smoldering ruins of the protesters' camps in the Maidan, where those first battles in the war for Ukraine's future were fought. I saw the true spirit of the Ukrainian people, and just as the brutal repression failed to break the Ukrainian spirit in the last century, so too will this latest effort to determine Ukraine's destiny fail. History is testing us once more. And it's clear we must stand together. We must stand with Ukraine against continued aggression. Russian forces make a mockery of the so-called ceasefire, and they continue their occupation of sovereign Ukrainian territory in Crimea and in Donbass. The United States, in my view, should provide direct, lethal military assistance to Ukraine to give the Ukrainians the tools they need to defend themselves. We must tighten sanctions until Russia understands its actions are unacceptable and respects Ukraine's sovereignty. We must help win the information war and help fight back against the propaganda machine that seeks to convince the world that somehow Russians are the victims of this and not the aggressors. We need sustained long-term support for strengthening this U.S.-Ukrainian relationship. This is why Senator Durbin of Illinois and I founded the Senate Ukraine Caucus. It's a group of senators committed to supporting Ukraine's democratic, pro-Western future. This is our mission and we stand shoulder to shoulder with everyone who supports this goal. It's important that we learn from the past to best shape the future. The best way to honor those who have fallen in a struggle for their country is to reach our shared destinies in a time in which peace and freedom are known to everyone. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you today. I wish you all the best of luck. God bless America and Slava Ukraini.
we thank Senator Portman for his continued support, especially in these harrowing times for Ukraine. The Senator is a staunch advocate of military assistance to Ukraine, as evidenced in his video message that to quell further Russian ag aggression and invasion of Ukraine's sovereign territory. It gives me great pleasure and an honor to acknowledge at our dedication ceremony today wounded Ukrainian warriors who are currently receiving treatment at the Walter Reed National Military Medical Center for their injuries sustained in their fight for Ukraine's independence. Please warmly welcome Ukraine's newest heroes. Amongst our speakers this afternoon are two representatives from Ukrainian diaspora community organizations. The Ukrainian World Congress is a global diaspora organization that represents over 20 million Ukrainians in nearly 50 countries worldwide. Their role is to coordinate the activities of the worldwide Ukrainian diaspora, and amongst one of its projects is the International Holodomor Committee, which is designed to bring recognition to the Ukrainian Holodomor. It is a pleasure to invite to the podium the President of the Ukrainian World Congress, Mr. Eugene Choli. Ваше святости, ваше блаженство, преосвященные владеки, все честнейшие отцы, Холодомор survivors, дорогие украинские воины, шановна пани Порошенко, honorable congressmen, congresswomen, Ambassadors and high level government officials, Shanona Holovo, Krinsko, Congressovo, Comitato Americhe, Dorohe, Ukrainski, Narode, Vukraini, Tabdiaspori, ladies and gentlemen. In his renowned work, The Divine Comedy, the famous Italian poet Dante gave the following chilling description of hell. When I awoke before the dawn, amid their sleep I heard my sons weep and ask for bread. In 1932-33, Stalin recreated the same hell in order to suppress Ukraine's independence movement. At that time, 17 Ukrainians were dying every minute. 1,000 Ukrainians were dying every hour and 25,000 Ukrainians were dying every day. And death by starvation is both slow and very painful. As a consequence, statistics from a previously suppressed census revealed that there were only 26 million Ukrainians living in the USSR in 1937, whereas there ought to have been 
10 million more, namely 36 million. Notwithstanding the sheer magnitude of the Holodomor, Stalin did not succeed in his evil endeavor as Ukrainians fought for and ultimately regained their independence in 1991 and after a courageous Euromaidan got rid of an authoritarian and corrupt regime in order to be able to live in dignity and to move forward towards Europe and no longer backwards towards another Soviet Union. Sadly today, 82 years after the Holodomor, Ukrainians are once again forced to confront a new Russian aggression, which threatens their aspirations to live freely in an independent and democratic Ukrainian state. In 1932-33, the international community turned a blind eye to Ukraine's unimaginable suffering and to Russia's brazen violation of our common fundamental freedoms and basic human rights. As a result, less than a decade later, another despot was emboldened to orchestrate another genocide, the Holocaust against the Jewish people and to provoke the Second World War. That is why the Ukrainian World Congress reiterates its call upon the international community under the leadership of the United States to effectively assist Ukraine in defending its borders to stop Russian aggression from progressing further into Europe and to ensure global peace, security and stability. On this occasion, the Ukrainian World Congress wishes to express its gratitude to the United States for recognizing the Holodomor as a genocide of the Ukrainian people and for enabling the construction of this outstanding memorial to the victims of the Holodomor in the nation's capital. With imenis Yutvoho Kongresu Ukrainsiu, Висловлюю велике признання за спорудження у Вашингтоні меморіалу жертвам Голодомору, Краєвому комітету США з визнання Голодомору 32-33 років геноцидом та Українському конгресовому комітету Америки. Хочу також наголосити, що Голодомор 32-33 років і нинішня агресія Російської Федерації в Україні мають ті самі причини. Це бажання Російської імперії упокорити український народ, вбити його національний дух та повернути Україну в новий Радянський Союз. Однак, я вірю, що наша спільна, наполеглива праця з підтримкою міжнародної спільноти допоможе, щоб Україна могла відзначити на другий рік свою 25-ту річницю незалежності як територіально цілісна суверенна, демократична та європейська держава. І в тому, що сти нам Боже, слава 
Україні. Thank you, Mr. Trudy, for joining us for this dedication ceremony and for your remarks. We wish you and the work of the Ukrainian World Congress much success in your projects as being advocates for a free and independent Ukraine. We are honored to have with us this afternoon the President of the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America. Celebrating its 65th and 75th anniversary this year, the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America was the impetus for the building of the Taras Shevchenko Memorial 51 years ago. Similarly, in 2001, the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America generated the idea of the Ukrainian Holodomor Memorial and initiated the formation of the U.S. Committee for Holodomor Genocide Awareness, 1932-33, co-sponsors of this event. Please warmly welcome to the podium the President of the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America, Ms. Tamara Oleksi. Your Holiness, Your Beatitude, Your Excellencies, Reverend Clergy, Madam First Lady, distinguished government officials, esteemed ambassadors, dear Holodomor survivors, ladies and gentlemen. Today is a momentous day in the history of the Ukrainian American community. After over a decade of hard work and anticipation, we have finally gathered here to witness the official unveiling of the long-awaited memorial to the victims of the Holodomor, Ukraine's genocide of 1932-33. As we stand in the shadow of this impressive memorial, let us not only reflect upon the horrific crime committed against the Ukrainian people 82 years ago, but also upon the millions of innocent souls taken by this tragedy, who, because their lives were brutally cut short by Stalin's henchmen, lost a chance to see another sunrise, hear the laughter of their children, or live out their lives in dignity and peace. Let this monument stand as a symbol of our unified efforts to expose the truth of this horrific act of genocide committed against the Ukrainian people in 1932 and in 1933, when millions of people, including three million children, were starved to death by the brutal policies of the Soviet regime. We mourn their deaths, and we pray that such atrocities never occur again. As solemn as this occasion is, the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America, which spearheaded this effort, and the entire Ukrainian American community should feel a measure of pride in the unveiling of this historically significant monument. Since the inception of this idea over a decade ago, our community's efforts met with numerous obstacles in bringing this project to fruition. But we remain steadfast in our objective. And as a result, this solemn memorial will, from this day forward, stand in our nation's capital as a reminder to the world about the horrors of genocide and as an everlasting symbol to promote vigilance against senseless acts of cruelty and violence, like those that befell Ukraine 82 years ago. On behalf of the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America, I would like to extend our sincerest gratitude to all those organizations and individuals who contributed to the building of this memorial. The tremendous effort of the U.S. Holodomor Committee, which worked on behalf of the entire Ukrainian American community, deserves not only our appreciation, but our praise. I would also like to extend a sincere thank you to Congressman Sander Levin for his leadership in sponsoring the congressional bill establishing the right to erect a monument on federal land and for his continued unwavering support to our community throughout the years. I would also like to thank all those who donated their financial and moral support to the realization of this project, 
your generosity and hard work have led us to this momentous occasion. It is through our unified efforts as a community that we have been able to place our mark on history. To the survivors of the Holodomor, who endured unspeakable hardships, we thank the Lord for sparing your lives. We are grateful that you are here with us today to witness this remarkable event. Finally, in memory of our Ukrainian brethren who perished as a result of the Holodomor, so many died in obscurity, so many do not have headstones to mark their passings or mourners to weep for them. May this memorial serve as a symbolic marker for these millions of innocent Ukrainian souls, one that will keep their memory and their story alive for countless generations to come. May their memory be eternal. Vichnaya Pamyat. Ms. Alexi, thank you for your remarks and for the UCCA's continued work for advocating Holodomor awareness as well as advocating for Ukraine's future here within the United States. We wish you and the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America great fortitude and continued success in all of your endeavors. Thank you. At this time, I would also like to acknowledge statements of support we received from our friends on Capitol Hill, including Senator Marco Rubio, Representative Rodney Freelingheisen, and Representative Brendan Boyle. A thank you to them as well. And now, the highlight of our commemorative ceremony today, the blessing of the memorial to the victims of the Ukrainian Holodomor. His Holiness Filaret of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church Cave Patriarchate, His Beatitude Sviatoslav Patriarch of the Ukrainian Catholic Church, and His Eminence Antonia of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church in the USA, accompanied by hier hierarchy from churches, will perform the commemorative blessing. With reverence, I ask that everyone please focus your attention on the monitor above and join in communal prayer. Your Excellencies. Благословенный Бог наш, завжди, нині і повсякчас, і на віки віків. Святий помилуй нас, святий Боже, святий кріпкий, святий безсмертний помилуй нас, святий Боже, святий кріпкий, святий безсмертний помилуй нас. Слава Отцю і Сину і Святому Духу, він нині повсякчас і на віки вічні. Амінь. Пресвята і Тройця помилуй нас, Господи, очисти гріхи наші, владико прости беззаконня наші. Святий зданця і стіли немочі наші, імені Твого ради. Господи, помилуй, Господи, помилуй, Господи, помилуй. Слава Отцю і Сину, і Святому Духу, і нині повсякчас, і навіки вічні. Амінь. Отче наш, що є Син на небесах, нехай святиться ім'я Твоє, нехай прийде царство Твоє, нехай буде воля Твоя, як на небі, так і на землі. Хліб наш насушний дай нам сьогодні, і прости нам провини наші, як і ми прощаємо винуватцям нашим, і не веди нас у спокусу, але визволи нас від лукавого. Бо Твоє є царство, і сила, і слава, Отця, і Сина, і Святого Духа, нині і повсякчас, і на віки віків. Господеві помолімся, Bow before, before you, Lord, to bless this monument, commemorating the victims of the man-made famine of 1932 in Ukraine. May this monument serve to gather us to pray for their souls and to renew the memory of the entire world 
as to this horrific loss of lives, give us the courage to always give living witness and testimony to these victims. Help and direct us to be always faithful in speaking up for victims of injustice wherever it may occur in the world. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, direct us in your holy and merciful ways to remind all of the horrendous tragedy of the feminine genocide in Ukraine. Jesus, you assured us that whoever follows you will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Help and direct us to encourage one another and all in the world not to walk in darkness, but in the pursuit of truth and justice for all. Send your Holy Spirit to renew within us passion for the pursuit of your truth. Lord, bless this monument with your abounding presence and bless in special ways those who have dedicated themselves with great generosity and zeal to facilitate this commemoration of the victims of the man-made famine genocide in Ukraine. For you are God, our holy, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Most heavenly Father, we gather as people of the Ukrainian nation from the United States of America and many other countries of the world, all supporters of liberty and justice for mankind, to dedicate a national monument constructed to memorialize those many millions of men, women, and children, all victims of the Holodomor, the genocidal famine in Ukraine of 1932 and 33, perpetrated against the people of Ukraine by the godless leaders of the former Soviet Union. It is altogether fitting and proper that, it, that we have finally accomplished this important milestone in such a prominent place in, our, in the heart of our nation's capital. We must never permit ourselves to forget, O oh Lord, about these victims and about the horror of what man can do to fellow man, examples of which we see abundantly throughout our world even today. If we permit ourselves the luxury of letting history be history, then we are doomed. If we force the memory of those millions who died out of our minds because it makes us or someone else uncomfortable, then we fail them and we will be guilty of participating in the creation of all the necessary circumstances for such devastation to occur again. Help us, O Heavenly Father, to never forget. At the same time, O Lord, enable us to move forward as citizens of a free world without paralysis, without doubt, without trepidation to unquestionably comprehend the sanctity of human life, which no man has the right to end for any possible reason. Enable us to become ever more determined as we visit this memorial to be observant citizens of the world, whether it be in Cave, Washington, or any other world capital in the Middle East or Africa, searching for the signs of further abuse or devaluation of human life. Enable us to do our part in making the world a safe place in your vast creation over which you have entrusted us to be stewards and caretakers. By the grace you have imparted to us, O Lord, May we, may, we, may we be worthy of that trust as we bless this monument and as we glorify you with your only begotten Son and your all Holy Spirit today and unto the ages of ages. Amen.
благословенный Бог наш, завжди ныне и по всяк час, и на веки веки. Проститися їм від всякої провини вільної і невільної. Бессмертного царя и Бога нашего просим. Голодом невинно уморенных и тебе славу воссылаемо, с безначальным твоим Отцем и Пресвятым, благим и животворящим твоим Духом, ныне по всяк час и на веки веки. Христа 
Боже, надія наша, слава Тобі. Слава Отцю і Сину і Святому Духу, і нині по всяк час і на віки вічні. Амінь. Господи, помилуй, Господи, помилуй, Господи, помилуй. Владико, благослови. Христос, що воскрес із мертвих, Живими і мертвими володіє, є істинний Бог наш, молитвами причистої своєї матері, святих славних і всехвальних апостолів, преподобних і богоносних отців наших і всіх святих, душі спочилих рабів Твоїх, голодом на Україні умирених, веселях праведних вчинить, на лоні Авраамовому упокоє, до праведників приєднає і нас помилує, бо він благий і чоловіколюбий. У блаженньому спині, подай Господі, спочилим рабам Твоїм, преснопам'ятним, від голоду в Україні уморених і сотвори їм вічну пам'ять. Праведників приєднає і нас помилує, бо він благий і чоловіко Ladies and gentlemen, we have bore witness to a truly historic event. 
I know that many of us have wiped away tears of both sadness and joy as the Holodomor Memorial was being blessed and dedicated. The memorial that you had seen on the monitor would not have been possible without the creative eye of our next speaker, the design architect of the memorial, Ms. Laresa Corelis. Larissa has practiced architecture for over 30 years in Washington, D.C., and her centerpiece design is the Field of Wheat bas relief sculpture. As Washington is known as a city of many monuments, Larissa Kurilas is distinguished as one of four women to have memorials in this fair city. Please warmly welcome the design architect of the Holdemore Memorial, Ms. Larissa Kurelis. I first learned about the Holdemore from my seventh grade Ukrainian school teacher, Mrs. Varvara Dibert who recalled with pain the memory of desperately hungry Bespretulni, homeless peasant children wandering the streets of Kyiv, and then again 10 years later from another teacher, scholar and Holodomor expert, Professor James Mace, whom I met while studying at Harvard. From Professor Mace, I learned in excruciating detail of the Communist Party machine that engineered and enforced cruel and impossible grain requisitions. I, of course, did not know then that one day, with the design of this memorial, I would have the privilege of honoring the many millions of victims of the whole Damar. In my design, the lessons of my teachers guided me. All of us, each in our own way, have contributed to honoring the memory of the victims, whether through spoken testimony, the written word, political action, scholarly research, requiem services, or with the simple act of being present here today. My contribution has been visual in rendering a simple field of wheat as it transforms from beautiful bounty to haunting nothingness. My hope is that when standing before this memorial, people will pause to reflect on the Holodomor, a famine of massive proportions, a famine deliberately executed and cynically denied, a famine in which millions of innocent victims perished in what was once the breadbasket of Europe. This National Holodomor Memorial stands in the capital of the United States, in a country where truth may be spoken without fear of retribution. For five generations, arriving here at different times and for different reasons, Ukrainians have embraced this legacy of truth-telling, relying on America to offer moral justice. This memorial, by turning a glaring spotlight on the brutality of a deliberate famine, one intended to cripple an entire people, serves as a reminder of cruelty that should never be allowed to happen again. Only a caring community could bring to completion a project such as this. A project such as this first requires a caring Ukrainian-American family, one in which more than personal excellence and contribution to society are expected, one in which the duty to protect a threatened cultural heritage is instilled. I have been blessed to have such a family. It takes institutions within the Ukrainian-American community to reinforce those aspirations. It requires a political community in the United States that embraces rather than rejects cultural diversity. It takes another political community, the government of Ukraine, to have the resolve to understand its history and to dignify its tragedies. 
Finally, it takes cooperation between the United States and Ukraine to make a memorial to a Ukrainian tragedy stand in Washington, D.C. To build a memorial takes a community of artists, architects, engineers, contractors, bronze casters, and stonemasons who care about achieving a beautiful and lasting result. And there must be a community of truth seekers, historians, scholars, and religious leaders who understand the deep need in all people to expose a heinous crime. I am deeply proud to have been part of the efforts of all of these caring communities, an effort that has brought about the creation of the National Holodomor Memorial. Now it will take a caring world community to, ins to ensure that starvation as a weapon is never again used against innocent people. Bez sumnivu, stvaranje cjoho pametnika bude najvažljivišim projektom mojej arhitekturni karijere. Ali božaju ponad vse, što bi se pšenične pole, kožne zerno, stalo hidnim simbolom tih žert, pro jaki moja učiteljka v školi Ukrajino znalstva ne mogla zabuti, ta vsih žert holodomoru našeho velikoho ukrajinskoho narodu. Vična pamet. Larissa, the audience's gratitude and jubilation is evident by their applause and cheers. On behalf of everyone assembled, thank you for your award-winning design that now beautifies the city of Washington, D.C. Officials from the National Park Service are also with us this afternoon and would wish to say a few remarks on this auspicious occasion. The Nas National Park Service acted as our overall sponsor for the development of this memorial and has been with us since the beginning stages of this fairly lengthy process. I would like now to call to the podium Mr. Robert Vogel, Superintendent of Parks and Memorials for the National Park Service. Mr. Vogel. Good afternoon. It's an honor to be here today with First Lady Porchenko, Your Excellencies, our good friend Congressman Levin, and other distinguished guests. On behalf of Secretary of the Interior Sally Jewell and National Park Service Director John Jarvis, it is my distinct honor to be here today for the dedication of the Holdemore Memorial to the Ukrainian famine of 1932-33. I congratulate the government of Ukraine and the Ukrainian American community for your dedication and perseverance in seeing that this memorial is finally completed. You know, some of the most well-known symbolic and commemorative memorials in the world are cared for by the National Park Service from the Washington Monument and Lincoln Memorial to the World War II Memorial, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. The sites under our care honor distinguished public figures and military and civilian sacrifices, all of which reflect our common ideals, values, and growth as a nation. There are also sites we care for that honor people and commemorate events from other countries. Among these international commemorative sites are the German-American Friendship Garden, located on the grounds of the nearby Washington Monument, the Victims of Communism Memorial, just a few blocks from here, and the statue to Ukrainian poet and artist Taras Shoshenko. And today, we honor the Ukrainian people with another monument, 
the Holdemore Memorial to the Ukrainian famine. 83 years ago, the Ukrainian people in the former Soviet Union were victims of the harsh policies and cruel actions of a totalitarian regime. Joseph Stalin placed unrealistically high quotas on grain and other agricultural products and enforced the measures with the Soviet military. In the wake, seven to 10 million men, women, and children were starved to death in the resulting famine. And for decades after, information about the Holdemore was suppressed by the Soviet authorities, so that today it remains largely unknown in the United States or anywhere outside of the Ukraine for that matter. And therein lies the very important role the National Park Service will play as steward of this new memorial. National parks help us not only to celebrate our greatest achievements, but also to remember our most somber and tragic moments. From the final resting place of the USS Arizona at Pearl Harbor to the Pennsylvania field where passengers and crew of Flight 93 fought back against terrorism, America's national parks preserve the places and tell the stories of some of the most painful episodes of our collective past. And starting today, the sacrifice, strength, and courage of the Ukrainian people during the Holdemore will be commemorated and told at this memorial. The National Park Service tells stories such as this not because they are pleasant or uplifting, but precisely because they serve as an important reminder of a painful past. But this memorial also serves as an inspiration for how the Ukrainian people overcame the horror of the Holodomor to form an independent, democratic, and free country. And my promise to you today is that the National Park Service will keep this memorial and all the places entrusted to our care to the highest standards of stewardship so that it will not only serve as a reminder of the atrocities committed against the Ukrainian people, but may also inspire future generations to create a more tolerant, unified world. Thank you very much. Mr. Vogel, it has been an honor working with you these many, many years, and we thank you for your tremendous support as our sponsor throughout this amazing journey. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. Sadly, we are approaching the conclusion of our commemorative program. And I would like to take this opportunity to express our special gratitude and thanks to all of our distinguished guests this, this afternoon, as well as to the countless who have assisted in the whole Demor Memorial building process. Many of the aspects you had seen or read about have been a testament to the, to the hard work, dedication, and support of a team of people. Most notably, our humblest gratitude to the Firtash Foundation for their stately donation in 2013 to make the memorial that you see today a reality. Amen. 
Representatives of the Foundation are with us on this auspicious occasion, and this memorial would not have been possible without the generosity of said foundation. But there are countless other foundations, Ukrainian-American credit unions, and the government of Ukraine to also thank for their immeasurable moral support and their stalwart donations in the decade-plus time for our work in this historic memorial. Also, our deepest appreciation to what I call our extended family, who made this idea of a memorial a reality. With us this afternoon are the countless technical minds of the project. From the architect on record, Hartman Cox, the design architect, Larissa Kurillas, the sculptors, Larissa Kurillas and Lawrence Welker, the foundry of Loran Bronze, the general contractor, Forrester Construction, and others. These are the individuals who guided us during the approval process in Washington and were responsible for building the memorial site and transforming that one patch of green grass to a memorial of grandeur and stature. A big round of applause for your guidance and assistance throughout this process. And lastly, ladies and gentlemen, but most importantly, to you, my fellow Ukrainian Americans, who in the thousands traveled far and wide, and at times in not so pleasant weather, to be with us this afternoon. Your moral and financial support are immeasurable but your devotion to spreading Holodomor awareness will always be remembered. Thank you. Thank you all. Cheski slava vam spasebi. To conclude our program, I would now ask everyone to stand as the Ukrainian Bandurist Chorus closes our official program with the singing of a prayer for Ukraine, Borje Veliki Yedeni.